Stretching across the states of Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland, this $31 billion railway project is on track to revolutionize Australia's transportation system with a 1.8 kilometer long double stack train traversing the country at 115 kilometers per hour and is promising to reduce transport times from 33 to 24 hours between Melbourne and Brisbane. To grasp the sheer size of Australia, this 1600 kilometer railway is longer than the 1430 kilometer train ride from London to Rome. So the question that stands is with Australia being such a vast territory, why has it taken the nation this long to build? Forty kilometers north of Melbourne is the town Beveridge where the Inland Rail begins its journey, stretching all the way to Kagaru, Queensland, near Brisbane. This route will pass through key regional hubs like Parks, Narromine, and Toowoomba, as it serves to minimize congestion in major cities whilst maximizing connectivity to existing rail networks. Victoria will build on the existing Northeast Line to reinforce bridges, modify platforms, and upgrade infrastructure to accommodate the estimated 6.15 to 7 meter high double stack freight trains with the Beaconsfield Parade Bridge in Glen Rowan to be completely replaced. Then moving into the Barnawartha North, Tracks will be lowered under the Murray Valley Highway Bridge to ensure the fast-paced double-stack freight trains can pass without obstruction, as such changes serve to increase the quantity of goods being transported. Now shifting our focus to New South Wales, this is where the route combines both upgraded tracks and entirely new sections. Right here between Narromine and Narrabri, the largest section of this project will consist of 75 new bridges and viaducts and 49 public crossings to be constructed along a 300-kilometer corridor of newly laid railway. The construction of the narrow mine to narrow breeze section is so vast it's had to be managed by a 50-50 joint venture between Axiona and CPB contractors, appointed by the Australian Rail Track Corporation, or ARTC. As we make our way past the halfway point, the journey continues from Narrabri that towards North Star in New South Wales. This stretch, known as the Narrabri to North Star section, involves upgrading approximately 186 kilometers of existing track and building new segments where the old infrastructure can't meet the required standards. But it's towards the end of the journey where the fun really begins as the North Star section, spanning a total of 247 kilometers, crosses into the state of Queensland and connects with the locality of Gori, situated near Toowoomba. Although detailed geological surveys are yet to be complete for this section of the railway, the project is planning to use tunnel boring machines for sections like the Toowoomba Range Tunnel, making up a significant portion of the $31 billion cost. Finally, the rail line proceeds from Gowrie to Kagaru, forming the critical link to Brisbane. This section integrates with Queensland's existing rail network, providing a direct, high-capacity freight corridor to the port of Brisbane marking the completion of Inland Rail's transformative Melbourne to Brisbane connection. The Inland Rail promises to cut down on congestion and emissions while connecting regional communities in ways that have never been possible before. Similar to how China's Belt and Road Initiative aims to modernize its transport infrastructure to boost trade, Australia's Inland Rail is poised to future-proof its logistics network, offering a more sustainable solution than the traditional reliance on road freight. Freight transport is the backbone of Australia's economy. From fresh produce grown in regional farmlands to coal exported overseas, the constant movement of goods keeps the country running, but the current system is struggling to keep up. Highways are packed with trucks, emissions are rising, and the cost of long-haul transport is going up. Rail transport is four times more fuel efficient than road transport. A single freight train can replace up to 110 trucks, easing congestion and reducing road accidents. And when the freight sector pumps out 39 million tons of CO2 each year, switching from road to rail isn't only about efficiency, it's about the environment. A shift like this could cut emissions by as much as 75%. And in a world racing to combat climate change, Australia can't afford to ignore the solution right in front of it. Many rural areas feel left behind in terms of development. This railway will connect regional centers to major cities, opening new trade opportunities and boosting local economies. With Australia's population expected to reach 40 million by 2050, the demand for freight will only grow, making this project even more essential to the nation. The idea of an inland railway isn't new. Proposals date back to the late 19th century with early plans to link Brisbane to Melbourne via key regional hubs. 
However, many forget that the states of Australia only became a Commonwealth nation in 1901, and it was at this time of Australia's history that each state and territory had conflicting priorities which prevented the project from proceeding forward. Let's also not forget with Australia being a young nation, all efforts and resources were focused on the outbreak of World War I in 1914. And as the 20th century progressed forward, the rise of the automobile and trucking industry shifted the nation's focus towards road infrastructure, reducing the urgency and investment needed for large-scale rail projects like the Inland Railway. It wasn't until the early 2000s that serious momentum built, and in 2017, the federal government set aside $8.4 billion for the Inland Rail, making it a national priority. Now, the project is well underway, with construction divided into 13 sections across three states. As for all large-scale projects, the environmental impact must be considered, and by shifting freight from road to rail, the Inland Rail is expected to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 750,000 tons every year significantly reducing Australia's carbon footprint. It also incorporates reforestation and wildlife corridors to protect nature. For instance, in Victoria, 3D printed nesting boxes have been installed for native wildlife displaced by construction. These efforts reflect a broader commitment to minimizing ecological impact. But beyond speed, efficiency, and sustainability, there's another major benefit, jobs. The Inland Rail is creating employment, particularly in regional areas, over 6,200 people have been hired, with $3.7 billion in contracts awarded. Local businesses, including 36 First Nations, have earned nearly $500 million, boosting regional economies. The Inland Rail is preparing Australia's freight network for the future. As the population grows, demand for freight transport will rise. The railway's design supports technological upgrades with advanced signaling and automated tracking to enhance safety and efficiency, while future expansions allow adaptability. A 1,600-kilometer railway involves much more than simply laying tracks. It requires overcoming the challenges posed by nature, costs, and the complexities of land ownership. First, there's the weather. Australia's climate is nothing if not unpredictable. Cyclones, flooding, and scorching heat can all disrupt construction, making planning a constant challenge. Take the Condamon River floodplain in Queensland, one of the most flood-prone areas along the route. Engineers had to conduct extensive flood modeling to ensure that, even in extreme conditions, the railway would remain operational. Then there's the issue of cost. Originally budgeted at far less, the project's price tag has now soared to $31 billion. This rising cost led to an independent review in 2022, revealing management and oversight issues. The solution? a step-by-step -step plan prioritizing the beverage to parks section for completion by 2027, while the extension to Brisbane has been put on hold. Land acquisition has also been a major sticking point. The railway cuts through diverse landscapes, requiring negotiations with landowners and compensation for affected properties. Some areas, like the Pilliga Forests in New South Wales, have sparked controversy, with Aboriginal land councils and environmental groups opposing construction. Striking a balance between development, environmental conservation, and community rights has proven to be one of the trickiest parts of the project. The Inland Rail is a game changer for Australia, transforming the freight network by two of Australia's capital cities, Melbourne to Brisbane. It will cut travel times, reduce congestion, lower emissions, boost the economy, and set a new standard for sustainability. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more incredible content.